Hello and welcome to ICANN Media. We are coming to you from beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia. We are just outside of Canada Place where a huge conference is going on called Globe 2014. I'm your host Rob Hislop and over the next couple of days we're going to be heading into the conference taking in some of the many sessions and talking to some of the keynote speakers. Some of the topics discussed, changing energy landscapes and responsible resource management. Now there are over 250 plus speakers, world leaders in their industry talking here over the next three days. 50 plus countries are represented and there are over 300 exhibitors at the trade show. We are going to give you a taste of what Globe 2014 has in store. Joining us now on ICANN Media is Hella Bank Jorgensen with the uh, Global Compact Network Canada. You're here talking about transparency. First, tell us a little bit about what the Global Network Canada is. So the Global Compact Network Canada is a group of Canadian companies. We are 89 companies at the moment here in Canada. Uh, and the network is number 101 in the world. So we were established last June ringing the bell at the Toronto Stock Exchange, or pressing the button, I think that we should say. Um, and it's, it's a network of like-minded companies and organizations, small, large, public, private, uh, and as well as subsidiaries from global companies. So, and we're together because we believe in the 10 principles within human rights, labor rights, environment, and anti-corruption. And, and the Global Compact as such is the largest voluntary initiative within um, CSR or corporate responsibility or sustainability. Okay. So that's a group you're with. Here you're talking about transparency, transparency in, in the business world. Uh, how have you seen that change over the years? Oh, so I go back 25 years okay. uh, and, and I had the pleasure of actually doing the first green account in the world for steelwork, not in Canada, but in Denmark. And the reason that they started was to say they had a competitor that were, in their mind, polluting more. But the whole society around them were saying, hey, what are you doing? You're polluting. So they wanted to do a report to show what were they doing. So they wanted to be transparent. I think now, if you fast forward, because at that point we did not have like internet, we did not have smartphones and could take pictures and stuff like that. So fast forward now, we are in a situation where transparency is something that companies need to see, do I have any blind spots? Is there anything in my supply chain? Uh, but also, what is it? that the public want to hear about? What is it that my stakeholders want to hear about? And that's where the whole materiality has come into place. Knowing what is it that I should report on. And I think that's that's the hard part that we're seeing at the moment. And clearly, you know, we have like transparency and that's not going to go away. Um, but you need to understand how to communicate in a trustworthy way. And at the end of the day, transparency is because we want to trust companies, right? Are companies being forced into this because maybe being as open, they, they all would have liked to have thought that they had the trust, but the openness hasn't always been there. Yeah, and I think that goes back to the fact that we, you think back, you know, you started almost like saying, trust us, because we of course do that, to like, oh, now you need to actually start to convince us what you're what you're doing as a business and I don't think that that has come just by a question about not knowing what this is all about I think that businesses have simply the blind spots as well as they have some bright spots but they have some blind spots that they're not aware of so also education or discussing internally some I'm, I'm for the global compact has a board program that trains boards, so when we 12 global facilitators. And the reason for that board program is also to discuss with the board and the C-suite, what is it that's material for that company? So they start to be able to embed that into the organization and look at the reports in a different way and asking the right questions. And I think that's what we need. We need some education as well as understanding this 
transparency and what what is driving. And honestly, if you're not around the table at the moment, you're probably on the menu. If you're if you're not out there communicating, um, you can say, is that being forced to? No, I think from the good companies, they they want to actually go out and communicate because they understand it's part of doing business today. Exactly. Yes. Um, at one time, it was the stockholders that everybody that catered to. Now it seems like it's the general public that almost seems to be taking more, more of an, a level of importance. I think I think you have all the different stakeholder groups. You have customers clearly uh, an important group. Investors is clearly an important group. Employees is not perhaps one of the really important groups in, in this as well. But yes, the public as such and governments is starting to get more and more interested in around the world and actually setting up um, what is the kind of information that they want from companies. Um, Are you encouraged that uh, that we're heading in the right direction and we'll go there at a decent speed at least, if not breakneck? Um, decent speed. See, I've been on this for 25 years. I'm hoping that in the next 25 years that we are actually going to see and actually embedding, getting to embed the externalities into the system, into the prices, and thereby also start taking the right decisions. And I think we'll see companies uh, embarking on great new business models because they start to, to go down this route and see both, as I said, the blind spot, but also the bright spot. So what are the risks, but definitely also the opportunities. And there's, there's a lot of them. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome.